Hey everyone, this is Dark Knight from Method Gaming. I hope you are feeling well and staying safe. Uh, this is another Raid Shadow Legends video and this one is going to be about the top 10 things I love about uh, Raid Shadow Legends. Although love may be a strong word, but let's use that one. Alright, so let's get right into the list. Uh, the first thing that I... that firstly actually drove me to download and try the game was the graphics. I think it's a great looking game for a, for a mobile game. Uh, I love the dark fantasy theme going on with the game and I definitely enjoyed that. Uh, and That definitely caught my eye in the beginning and uh, made me try it out in the first place. Uh, the champion designs are actually really cool. You've got various champions. Of course, you do have from time to time reskins of certain champions, but overall, uh, you get like very detailed, very cool looking champions. And those are just fun to look at. As you can see. Uh, I also, what I also like about this is the, the style is not highly stylized uh, cartoony style if you know what I mean there are a lot of games out there with that particular style uh, I'm not bashing on those games by any means uh, and I know that there are a lot of people out there who actually may prefer the cartoony style especially younger players uh, so I'm definitely not saying they're they're bad games or anything like that but what I'm saying is I do enjoy the dark fantasy look more than I do than I enjoy the cartoony look. So that's definitely a plus in my book. And something I forgot to mention, by the way, this is an opinion piece, so to speak. So uh, these are obviously very subjective things that uh, I myself uh, think. But I'm not saying that these are like this is the end all be all of uh, the pros or things that are great about the game. I'm sure that you, if you've played the game uh, already, have uh, have maybe a lot in common with what I'm, what I'm about to tell you, but also you may have many other things that you enjoy that I do not mention, or maybe I forgot to mention, or maybe that I don't enjoy. I actually plan on making another, another video about the um, things I hate about the game. Alright, so moving on to to the second one is the fact that the game is cro uh, cross-platform now and has been for a while actually with emulators but uh, several months ago uh, the client the PC client came out so you can actually uh, don't you don't even need emulators anymore uh, though there are certain uh, pros and cons to having uh, both uh, the client and the emulator um, you have options is what I'm saying so that's definitely something that's going to help your battery life on your phone if you have the option to play it on your laptop or, or on your desktop so definitely something that I think is uh, a great asset and has been something that has allowed me to to play the game more uh, than I would if, uh, if it was only available on phone uh, the next thing that I want to mention number three is the deep, deep customization for champions. Uh, basically the theory crafting potential and the, the different builds that you can do with champions is pretty much amazing uh, in my opinion. Uh, it's got at least from uh, compared to the game that I uh, played before which was uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes I would say it has deeper customization than that because firstly um, in uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes you have six slots for mods which is basically kind of like your equipment here in this game but here you have three extra slots that you can uh, play with so that's that's adding another 50% customization on top of the six slots here and uh, also interestingly you have masteries which uh, is something that not a lot of games like this have at least maybe I haven't played games like this uh, but I haven't noticed I've tried a few other games which are gacha type games and uh, haven't noticed that particular uh, specialization like uh, masteries uh, basically you have 
three trees and you can you can pick and choose the skills you go down the tree so to speak you have to be mindful of what you're going to choose because uh, it'll open up uh, other possibilities down uh, down the road so it's you can you can change a character a lot just by changing up their masteries uh, not to mention uh, using different gear to build them differently uh, it's just you know there's a lot of options uh, for example let me just take uh, stagnite as an example you can build stagnite with little damage and mostly as uh, as a debuffer because of his uh, skill hunt master which attacks all enemies and has a chance to uh, place decrease defense and decrease attack you can book that to 95 percent so on and so forth you don't need to be, uh, maybe to read you the kit but basically you can focus on that uh, and just make him a strong debuffer by, by making him tanky and survivable because you want him uh, not to die so he can place his debuffs and also have him uh, have him have high accuracy that way make sure that he lands those debuffs alternatively though you could um, get rid of that tankiness a little bit for attack and just make him do serious amounts of damage uh, as well as the debuffs so you could go both ways uh, you can even build them uh, in a different way completely uh, it's entirely up to you and that's something that I really like about the game Another thing is the kit synergy, and uh, most champions have that. Uh, but what I mean by kit synergy is most champions will have some sort of a kit which gives them a certain role or roles to fill in a, in a party. For example, let's take the Arbiter here. Uh, her kit, I'm not going to go into details, but her kit is basically built around speeding up your team. Uh, keeping your team alive or resurrecting them if they drop. Uh, she is primarily an arena champion, but she is also really amazing in dungeons, pretty much any content. She is basically a great support champion. All her skills are based around support, especially useful in arena. So that uh, that in, in and of itself is something that I do love about the game. Is uh, the kits for the champions. Not not all of them are great, by the way. Of course, uh, some kits uh, are kind of mind-boggling if you think about it. Uh, but for the most part, uh, they actually uh, play fairly well with uh, with uh, theory crafting and building the the char character and so on. Uh, also, in this uh, fourth point, I wanted to mention the team synergy. And what I mean by team synergy is the most basic. Now, if you've played the game, you probably haven't really thought about that very much, or you just take it for granted. But if you haven't tried the game yet, uh, what I mean by that is uh, you'll have basically uh, having the five most amazing champions doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to build up a good team with those five champions. For example, having five heavy attackers doesn't necessarily mean that you do well in dungeons or in other content uh, as opposed to really building your team well and having it uh, synergize well with each other. For example the most uh, basic concept I can show you right now is the arena uh, where basically let's let's see let's do this one for example uh, basically the synergy is this for this particular team. I have a speed lead which is also turn meter booster so uh, the game if you don't know is based on taking turns so when you when somebody boosts your turn meter or speeds you up this is uh, this is a huge advantage because you are more likely to go before the enemy than uh, in other situations and after the speed boost I've got a character that or a champion that gives me debuffs on the enemy team then I have another champion which runs interference and finally I have a champion which basically nukes the other team so let's see it in action so you can see what I mean real quick okay, slow down a little bit so turn meter boost AOE debuffs Interference, dropping the turn meter of the enemies, and finally a nuke. And that's it. 
if you had four attackers without a speed booster in there, you would not do that well. That's what I mean by team synergy. Same goes for dungeons or for any other content in this game. Number five is uh, temporary and permanent bonuses. Something that I do love about this and RPG games in general is uh, being able to build your character or uh, in this case champions um, consistently throughout the game and being able to stack bonuses, even little ones, uh, that can really make a difference and just sort of so you, you can see that your dedication to to building up those uh, bonuses is actually paying off. Now, what I mean by temporary and permanent bonuses is if we take a look at the Great Hall here, uh, we've got the champion bonuses from um, our current arena tier. I'm in gold 4 right now, so that means that I get plus 20% hit points, attack, and defense. Now, if I was lower in the rankings, I would have a lower percentage here. Or if I was in platinum tier, which is the top one, uh, I would have 25% for each. So these are what I call temporary bonuses, because if you drop down in the ranks, uh, then those will go down as well. But for the most part, you will be able to keep those consistently throughout uh, your play. So, uh, you know, just might go they might go up they might go down but they'll be there for the most part and by permanent bonuses I mean the Great Hall itself as you can see these are all different bonuses that you can have for your champions for all champions and this uh, this is included and takes effect for the entire game not just uh, arena for example so all of these bonuses the temporary and the permanent ones um, basically take effect for all your champions in the entire game. Of course, uh, you're looking at uh, magic champions, spirit champions, force champions, and uh, void champions. So basically, force champions, for example, will only benefit from this row here. And same goes for the others. So you're going to have to make a decision on which row or which uh, bonus you want to uh, focus on based on your champion pool. So if you mostly have magic champions and you haven't really built up any of the others, uh, then you should probably focus on this here as well, because uh, if you go for the other champions and you don't really have anything uh, going on yet uh, in the early game, these uh, points, th this time and effort that you spent into upgrading these is not going to pay off, at least not in the beginning. Later on, as you increase your champion pool and diversify your champion pool, it's definitely going to be uh, a good thing. So this, this kind of never goes away, and uh, it's something that will always help you. So definitely something that makes me feel good about the game and uh, makes me love the game uh, more, just for having that. Uh, after that, we've got number six, and those are the incentives to diversify the champion pool that you have. Basically, the first thing is the affinity system. So if you go into any sort of dungeon or campaign uh, battle, you will see the system up here. So you've got magic beats spirit, spirit beats force, force beats magic and void is in the middle. It's neither strong nor weak against any of the other affinities. But for example, if you're running a dungeon where you have a specific boss, um, for example, let's take the dragon. So you, as you can see, dragon changes affinity for every level as it goes up. But for the most part, you mostly at the end game, you'll mostly be farming stage 20 and the dragon is magic affinity on stage 20. So if you're building a team with spirit champions which are weak to magic, you're not going to do so well. Uh, you might still be able to beat it, of course, uh, depending on the champions that you use, but it's going to be slow and it's not going to be consistent because uh, they have a chance of landing a, a weak hit which just doesn't make them ideal. So this is one way of uh, the game sort of uh, pushing you to diversify your champion pool. Uh, for example, if you just want to beat this stage, you need either magic champions which have no disadvantages or advantages in this stage or force champions which actually have an advantage. Uh, the next thing is 
that I was thinking about and had in mind is faction crypts. Because basically faction uh, faction wars, sorry, or faction crypts or whatever you want to call them, they're based on factions, obviously, and that means that you're going to need a much larger pool of champions if you're going to beat uh, the faction wars. They're actually quite difficult, so uh, you can't just put together five champions from, let's say, the skinwalkers and just beat all the stages with whatever five you picked. Uh, you're still going to have to find good champions, uh, you're still going to have to gear them up really well in order for them to be able to beat all the stages. Now you don't necessarily have to beat all the stages of course, uh, but this is something that sort of is a long-term goal because you can easily farm the Faction Wars crypts um, on lower stages for glyphs. This is basically why you want to do those. You get glyphs out of them, uh, which help improve your existing artifacts. So that's definitely something that you want to do uh, as soon as you start the game, basically. Even if you just, can just beat the first stage, that's uh, one star glyphs uh, for for your gear, which is going to be useful. It can it doesn't it won't seem like a lot in the beginning, but it's going to uh, help you out, especially for example speed glyphs, having that extra speed from glyphs on your um, on your artifacts for your champs is just sometimes a really uh, make or break kind of thing, especially in the arena if you're trying to push speed on your uh, speed buffer. Uh, it's very important. Finally, speaking of arena by the way, uh, this is another thing that can uh, incentivize you to diversify your champion pool. Uh, what I mean by this is, for example, for campaign you just need a campaign farmer. Somebody that can go through a campaign as quickly as possible uh, and you're done. Uh, there's not much need to do any further than that. You don't need five campaign farmers, you only need just one really. Uh, so that's one champion and if you build that champion what else are you going to do? Well, then you move on to dungeons. Uh, for dungeons, you need to build teams of five champions, and each dungeon has specific uh, mechanics, so you can't necessarily use one team for all the dungeons. Uh, you might be able to and get away with using a single team for Fire Knight, Dragon's Lair, and Ice Golden Speak if you really get the right champions and you build them in the right way. But for example, Spider's Den is a very different dungeon from these three, so um, it's highly unlikely that the team that you'll be using for these three dungeons is going to be successful in Spider's Den. What is more, you kind of want to build effective teams which uh, beat these dungeons more quickly, so that's going to be different champions for each of the dungeons. But let's say that you, you build up 10, 15, 20 champions that you're going to use for these different dungeons. Uh, that's still not enough of an incentive to keep going and that's where Faction Wars, Arena and even Clan Boss come into play because you're still going to need, even if you've built 20-25 champions, you're still going to need more to beat the Faction Wars, you're still going to need more diversity to be able to switch it up in Arena and you will also need a separate pool of champions Though they can, of course, double up uh, in different uh, other areas, but for clan boss you need uh, specific champions with specific buffs or debuffs, and um, you need to build them in a specific way as well, which is kind of somewhat different from most of the other uh, modes for the game. Next up, we've got uh, number seven, and those are the missions and the achievements uh, and how they drive your progress. Now I've completed all the missions so I can really show you uh, an example of missions but for example uh, it, the missions are mostly making sure that you're moving sort of in the right direction. It, they're always pushing you one step further. Uh, for example in the beginning they'll ask you to complete uh, let's say stage 5 of the Minotaur's Lair 10 times on auto which is not very difficult. Uh, and at the end, of course, uh, they're going to ask you to do things such as beat uh, dungeons on level 20, which is the max level, uh, 10 times on auto, so you can't really uh, do it manually. Uh, so this requires, of course, some progress on your account in, in order to be able to do that. And 
it kind of pairs well with uh, what you want to to build in your account so every mission basically gets you one step closer to the to the next one to to the ultimate goal which is basically getting the arbiter uh, for free uh, so that's definitely something that helps achievements I don't have them because I've completed them but they are also I think very well built and they kind of drive you towards certain goals that you want to reach and upon reaching those goals you will realize if you look back you realize that you've actually improved your uh, roster that way all right number eight is no heavy time constraints from the game with the exception of energy what I mean by this is you don't actually need to be uh, logged into the game every 20 minutes or every hour or even every couple of hours basically there's no mechanic in the game that for example uh, has you playing at a specific time unless you're doing platinum arena and you're just fighting to keep your rank right before the reset that's once a week though and uh, you know it's your choice whether you want to do it or not but uh, just to give you an example in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes there's squad arena and uh, ship arena and they have payouts every day at a specific hour and if you want to get the max uh, of what you can do is you, you need to do your five arena attempts and start right about an hour before your payout and since there are two arenas there you're looking at about two hours of your time where you have to uh, spend uh, doing the arena missions uh, or fights rather uh, you have to be mindful of the timers because when once you do a fight there's a 10 minute timer before you can do your next one uh, sort of like for example sort of like the refresh option when you refresh here uh, you get a 15 minute timer but you still get 10 10 fights that you can do here so you uh, you have your hands full and you will be able to do several fights back to back before you have to wait for that timer to um, to run out so you can refresh again for free so it's it's kind of different and you can basically blow through most of your uh, tokens really quickly uh, if you want to you don't need to constantly refresh so that's something that I think is a, is a huge boon to the game. The ability to not have to log in at a specific time every single day, like some of the other games uh, kind of make you do, uh, if you want to get, of course, the top rewards. Uh, the next... Actually, before I get to the next part, uh, the thing I wanted to mention is the energy. So energy replenishes at 20 energy per hour so with a maximum of 130 energy that means you're looking at six and a half hours this I think is the most time constraining part because in six and a half hours your full your energy is going to be full even if you fully depleted it and that means that for example um, min maxers like myself uh, might kind of mess up their sleep schedule just to be able to uh, fully utilize that energy which I think you shouldn't do uh, and that's coming from a min maxer as well somebody who likes to utilize their resources to the maximum uh, you really shouldn't like be uh, uh, creating alarms for the middle of the night to use your energy or things like that it's uh, it's really not worth it to mess up your uh, sleep uh, cycle so that's something that I would say don't do it but at the same time it kind of makes you feel bad when you log into the morning and uh, you see your energy is full and you're kind of wondering okay how much energy did I lose just by not uh, not having a larger energy cap so that I, I can accumulate more uh, and besides six and a half hours aren't that much if you're working uh, for example if you can only play right before work and then you'll check in after work uh, that's about eight hours so I think you need a higher energy cap uh, in order to be you know comfortably uh, not thinking about uh, how your energy is going to cap out uh, in the last few hours at work uh, next thing is the battle pass I think this is actually a great addition to the game 
the extension of the login rewards is something that I really um, am happy about as well. Uh, so from 90 days it went up to 180 days, that's great. Uh, lately we've been getting a lot of uh, updates with quality of life changes which have been very crucial. For example, uh, increasing the champion vault, increasing the uh, space for champions in general up to 200 here and the champion vault can go up to 300 I think. I don't have the max out obviously, but here you can get up to 200 and 300 here, I think. Um, if I'm not mistaken. So that's definitely something uh, good. We've had other quality of life updates. Can't think of anything right now off the top of my head, but uh, quality of life changes and uh, upgrades are always, always welcome. And ju they just make our life easier in the game. You know, uh, the filter system, for example, uh, is a huge, huge boon go here you can now look for certain equipment by primary stats by secondary stats and it's so much easier to find now than it was before where you had to go through all your equipment and just go through all of it just try to find something you're gonna miss something you're gonna maybe not be able to find the piece you're looking for you may not even realize that you have the piece you're looking for if you can't uh, really do a filter to do the search so this was a huge, huge quality of life update that we got recently. And uh, bravo to Plargan for doing this finally. I hope they keep going for, for such quality of life changes in the future as well. We definitely need them. Uh, by the way, I heard, uh, heard the rumor that there's going to be an update uh, to oh, the level cap. It's not going to be 60. That's the player level cap, not the character level cap, by the way. So, you know, don't get a heart attack. Uh, so the player cap will go up to 100, from what I've heard in the next update. However, uh, they say that the energy cap is not going to budge. So it's still going to be 130, which I think is a bad decision. And I hope they reconsider it. If we get that 100 level cap, even if we get one max energy per level, at 100 we'll be looking at 170 max energy, which is much better. That's eight and a half hours before the energy caps out. I think that's great. If, if we can get that, that'll be awesome. If we can get even higher cap, that would be amazing. Now I can see why this might be a problem for Plarium because uh, they want to keep uh, selling those energy refreshes and if they have a higher cap a full energy refresh is actually going to give you more energy for the same cost unless they change uh, how much it costs. So uh, I can see them being reluctant to do that from their perspective. However, an easy fix would be to just cap the energy refreshes at let's say 150 energy. So don't make them into a full energy refresh, just make them into 150 energy for let's say 40, uh, 40 crystals. So I think that would be a very good solution uh, to, to this issue and would allow them to increase this cap even more than let's say 170. They can go up to 200, 300 even, doesn't matter. As long as it allows you to to put the game down for for a good chunk of time and then just pick it back up and uh, use your energy, play for a while when you have time, I think that's that will be an, an amazing improvement. So I hope that they change their mind on this. Uh, finally, number ten, we have a plethora of content creators for this game. They cover the game with informative, interesting, and fun content. Uh, they have different personalities which makes for different videos. You could watch a video on the same champion from let's say two, three, four, five different content creators and you're probably gonna f learn uh, something different from each one. Uh, you'll be able to see them uh, have a different perspective on each champion. Uh, tell you different things and sort of like give you a more uh, overall view of, uh, of the champion itself where uh, whereas it's not just repeating the same thing over and over and not the same same type of uh, uh, 
you know, same type of things that you would hear from uh, any other content creator. So I think that's that's really really important uh, because, for example, if you have if you're playing a game where there are not many content creators on YouTube, or they're just not good, uh, it's it makes it more difficult to get invested in the game. You know. Also, uh, the community is very active uh, and. Uh, the guilds are also very active. If you happen to uh, start playing and uh, sort of develop your, uh, your clan boss team and get into a larger guild, more active guild, uh, you're most likely going to be looking for uh, for a guild with a Discord. You can where you can get to meet the other guildies, uh, sort of exchange ideas with them, uh, theory craft with them, get to know them. You know and just have fun with them. So that's definitely something that's uh, that I like about the game as well. And finally, as a bonus, this is uh, this is just a bonus thing because I ran out, uh, I already mentioned all 10 uh, bonus, all 10 things that I love about the game, but the final thing is just a bonus and came to my mind as I was finishing, finishing up with the, uh, uh, the list, and that is no ads. I don't mean no offers. That's a totally different topic, and we'll talk about it in the uh, the things that I hate about the game video. But uh, the no ads part I really enjoy because I'm sure that all of you have played games where uh, it's basically ad after ad, especially uh, annoying when you let's say you type those type of games where you finish a mission and before you can even get your rewards, you have to watch an ad. Or if you want double rewards, you have to watch an ad. Um, I mean, you get used to it, but it's annoying. So I do like the fact that this is an ad-free game. Uh, you don't get those here. Um, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, which I played before, also didn't have ads, which is also something that I love about the game. So that's that's my bonus uh, number 11, so to speak. All right, guys. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, do you agree with my list? Do you have anything more to add? Or uh, do you want to argue against something that I mentioned? I'm sure that I missed out on a lot of uh, good things about the game in this list. Uh, 10 things is not enough to cover everything. Uh, I'm sure something slipped my mind. But this is, I think, uh, the most uh, comprehensive list that I could come up with. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and if you're a new player or if you're considering picking up the game, I hope that this has been informative for you to make a, a more informed decision. Uh, make sure you check out the other video where I talk about the um, negative sides of the game so that you can uh, have a more overall uh, view of what you're getting yourself into if you're just uh, thinking about starting the game. Because, you know, uh, if, for example, you're a specific type of player that don't enjoy gacha games and things like that, it's actually not really worth it to get into it. But at the same time, if you're into that RPG kind of stuff, uh, you know, building, theory crafting, um, having different champions, uh, making sure that they're the, uh, as strong as possible, then this might be a game for you. Alright guys, have a good one, thanks for watching, and Take care of yourselves and stay safe.